Two of our special senses are chemical senses. They are taste, known as gustation, and smell, known as olfaction. When we look at our tongue, we can see that there are bumps in our tongue, and the bumps that we can see in our tongue are known collectively as lingual papilla. But there are four different types. Filiform, which contain no taste buds. Foliate, which contain taste buds till about the age of two to three, whenever they degenerate. Fungiform, which contain taste buds, but only two to three taste buds per papilla. And valate, which contain the majority of taste buds. Now, humans have between 3,000 and 10,000 taste buds in their mouth. Now, taste buds all look alike, and they contain taste cells, which have taste hairs with receptors to detect flavors. They have supporting cells to take care of the taste cells, since their prior the taste cells' priority is to detect flavor. The supporting cells help clean the dishes and wash their socks and mop the floors for the taste cells so that they can focus on their primary mission. The uh, taste hair, in addition to having the taste cell, I mean, in addition to having taste hairs, also has synaptic vesicles, which are right adjacent to a sensory neuron. When the taste cell is stimulated by a flavor molecule, it will induce chemical reactions that cause the synaptic vesicles to be released into the sensory nerve fiber, stimulating sensory nerve. The taste bud only survives, the cells in it only survive for about seven to 10 days, and they are replaced by the stem cell, the basal cell, which is a stem cell, which divides to replace the ones that are lost. The primary taste sensations are sweet due to carbohydrates, salty due to metals like sodium and potassium, sour due to hydrogen ions from things like citric acid, bitter due to alkaline substances like nicotine, coffee, and cocoa, and umami. Now most of us are familiar with the sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. Umami is generally new to most of us. Umami was discovered in 1908 by the Japanese, and Americans become familiar with it in World War II whenever our soldiers discovered that the Japanese rations tasted better than ours. This is due to umami, which we commonly know as MSG, monosodium glutamate. It's the glutamate that activates umami receptors, inducing us to feel as if food tastes better and as if it's higher quality than it actually is. Now, we don't commonly call it MSG, but if you were to look it up on the internet, MSG can be named about 50 different things. So sometimes you can look for it on ingredients and food and think it's not there, but it's actually there under a different name. Now, in addition to the primary taste sensations, food is affected by other things like appearance. If it doesn't look right, then it will be less appetizing to you, even if you're hungry. Aroma greatly affects taste. If you've ever had a cold and your smell receptors aren't working very well, then you'll realize that taste um, gives us a, just a small amount of what we normally think of the flavor of food. Food just doesn't taste as good without the aroma. Temperature, personally, when I eat food, if the food is supposed to be warm, I want it warm or cold, I want it cold, but that affects other people different. And texture, I happen to like food with a lot of pulp or seeds, chunks in it, but my best friend, she prefers everything to be smooth and seedless. Additionally, we have spicy, which Asian countries recognize as a flavor, but spicy doesn't stimulate our taste buds the same way. Spicy actually stimulates pain and temperature receptors, 
and they travel along the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5. So for the primary taste sensations, if this particular taste cell detected sweet, then all the receptors on this taste cell would all be for carbohydrates. If this cell, if this cell here detected something else like salty, then it only detects salt and it can't detect bitter or umami. Each specific taste cell would be specific, have receptor specific for what it's one particular flavor that it has those receptors for. So in order for us to detect flavors, then we must dissolve the food in a solution. And the solution for taste will be saliva. And so we put food in our mouth, we chew it up, breaking it into small bits, mixing it with saliva. And as we mix it with saliva, the saliva will wash down the side of the lingual papilla and some of the fluid will enter through the taste pore and bind to the taste hair that has receptors that fit it. So the food molecules must dissolve in saliva and flood the taste pore. And then the molecules will bind to the receptor that fits their molecular shape and charge in a lock and key method. Once they bind to the receptor, then a series of a cascade of reactions will take place, and this is known as a second messenger system. The binding of the flavor molecule is the first messenger, but once it's bound, it induces what we call a second messenger system, which causes a series of chemical reactions to take place, which ultimately will induce exocytosis of neurotransmitters from the taste cells. And the neurotransmitter will stimulate the sensory fibers that are adjacent to that taste cell. And that will induce in that sensory neuron a receptor potential. And if this receptor potential is great enough to reach threshold, it will induce an action potential in the sensory neuron. And that sensory neuron is our first order neuron. Now, which first order neuron it will stimulate depends on the location of the taste bud. Taste buds on the anterior two-thirds of the tongue will stimulate the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7. On the posterior one-third of the tongue, they will stimulate the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 9. And if they're on the palate, the pharynx, or the epiglottis, they will stimulate the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10. All the first order neurons, facial, glossophilangeal, and vagus will travel to the solitary nucleus of the medulla oblongata. The second order neuron will start in the medulla oblongata at the solitary nucleus, and two of them will be sent. One of them will go to both the hypothalamus and the amygdala, and the other one will go to the thalamus. The hypothalamus and the amygdala are responsible for adjusting things like salivation and inducing gagging or vomiting. The thalamus is where we expect second order neurons to go. And from the thalamus, a third order neuron will be sent to the primary gustatory cortex within the parietal lobe. 